Hi, everyone, and welcome. It's sharply 12 noon. My name is Marianne Monteleone. I'm Vice President of Professional Development for LIBOR. We have a great program today and glad that you can join us. We have our trainer, Betsy Coyne, back with us and um, on features, new features for Zoom for 2022 and how realtors can use them. So let me um, formally introduce Betsy and then welcome her back to LIBOR. Betsy Coyne is a technology educator and coach and has specialized in technology training for over 30 years. After eight years of conducting systems training for corporate America, she started PCMAC technology, training people from a variety of industries how to use and experience technology by learning application usability. As an international Zoom instructor, she has trained thousands of people how to connect, teach, and manage business in a virtual world. In 2022, she created Technology for Real, an online learning academy for real estate professionals learning to incorporate technology into every aspect of their life in business. As a member of the National Real Estate Educators Association, RIA, as we know it, she contributes her Zoom experience and various committees uh, and has completed RIA's gold standard instructor certification, which I have to tell you is like the highest level that you can get for a technology trainer. While hosting workshops, meetings, and online summits, she is recognized as one of the most effective technology instructors for real estate associations nationwide. So we welcome back Betsy. Thank you. Hi, everyone. And thank you, Marianne. I am so excited to be back and to be here teaching you some of the new updates for Zoom. Specifically, we're going to be talking about polls and surveys today and how you can use those. Uh, but it's important to know off the top that when you're using Zoom, that you make sure before you go in to host your next event that you have updated the, the application. Um, if you are joining today from a computer, you cannot do it now. You can update while you're in a Zoom meeting. Uh, but on a computer, whether it's Windows or Mac, this application can be updated right from your local computer or from the Zoom website. It's free. And you should check periodically. Zoom updates itself from time to time. Sometimes every three weeks, there is a new update that comes out. I follow these updates extremely closely because it often gives us a new feature. Now, if you're on a mobile device today, again, you cannot update while you're in the Zoom meeting, and I don't expect you to either. But afterwards, go ahead and go to your app store, just like you would for any other app on your device, and see if there's any updates for the Zoom meetings uh, app. And it'll, it'll uh, tell you update, and you'll go ahead and do that. That will bring you to a point where you have the newest version. You see, when I host my meetings with the newest version, I'm going to use some things like today, I have an advanced poll for you. And if you don't have the newest version installed on your end, you might not see everything that your host is displaying for you. So there's always a good reason to, um, to do that, to check for updates. All right. Some of the new updates that are in Zoom um, have to do with polls and surveys. And that's what I'm going to cover in detail with you today. But I do want you to understand that there's also some updates that will help you to manage your participants inside the meeting. There is one called focus mode and Zoom added that in the focus mode turns the meeting. Actually, if I look around the room right now, many of you do have your cameras off. But because this is a meeting, you have the ability to turn your camera on. If you wanted to, you could. I specifically, even though this is called Webinar Wednesday, which I love coming to and presenting to you uh, each, each time that I am invited back, when it's a webinar, there isn't even an option 
a Zoom webinar. There isn't even an option to have your camera on or to be heard and ask a question. When I'm teaching brokers and agents how to use Zoom for their business to do business virtually, it's important for you to know how to use a meeting. The Zoom meeting is where you can be engaged with your buyers and sellers. And if you're a broker, you can be engaged with your team remotely from wherever you are. So it's important for me to do these in meetings. And once again, back to focus mode, focus mode turns everybody's cameras off with just a click of a button. And it's only from the host or the co-host's point of view. So if you're a participant, you wouldn't see that button today. That's something Zoom has added for 2022. In addition, there is a new way of sharing your screen content. You can share your screen content into a breakout room. And if you haven't been in a breakout room yet, <clears throat> or attended the last one I did. I believe the last one I did was on breakout rooms or the one before that. So I'm sure there's a recording you can ask Marianne about in the chat and go back and watch that recording over again to see how you can use breakout rooms. But that's a great way to have a buyer room and a seller room. You could have an, a virtual open house and have multiple presentations going on in each of those rooms. Well, now from the main session, you can share your content into those breakout rooms. Brand new feature for 2022. So if you're curious about any others, please put those questions in the chat. I will get to a point after this presentation to open it up for all of your questions. So please don't hesitate to ask, even if you haven't tried any of these yet and you're curious about what the benefits are. I apologize for my voice. I am overcoming just a little bit of a cold, so I'm going to do the best I can with my cup of tea here next to me. So I'm so excited to show you the benefits and the features behind using polls and surveys inside a Zoom meeting. And what we're going to talk about today, starting with the types of polls, and then we're going to talk about where these live. Where are the polls saved? Then we're going to go on to actually talk about creating questions. If you had questions for, you want to get instant feedback maybe from your, your audience, how would you go ahead and do that? And how can you launch those right inside the meeting when they're there with you? I'm going to do one with you today, and then I'm going to show you how. And then finally, there is something called a survey. The one thing I want you to remember about a survey is that that happens after the meeting. So if you do want to gather their feedback, but you don't want to do it during the meeting and wait for their feedback, you can put the questions into a survey. And then when they end the meeting, they're prompted with the survey on their way out. Kind of like if you were handing somebody a survey on the way out the door. So <clears throat> very first step in making sure that you can use the brand new polls feature is you need to turn this feature on inside of your Zoom account settings. And if you're thinking, Betsy, what do you mean by my Zoom account settings? Then I want you to listen up closely here. Is that if you're joining today just by clicking the link that was sent out and you don't have a Zoom account yet, then this feature isn't even available to you. you what you would have to do first is create a Zoom account. And then on top of that, Zoom has different levels of accounts. So it has a free account, and then it has the next level up, which is called a pro. And a pro account is <clears throat> approximately, if you pay for the whole year in advance, it's about $150 for the whole year. And at that level, you can use polls. If you're, if you're on the free account right now, then this type of poll would not be available to you. There are some others for free account users, but not this one in particular. So you go into your account, you log in on the web portal, and then you navigate to your Zoom settings. And then you'll see these two settings. One of them is called meetings, polls, and quizzes. And you can see the little blue switch there it has to be on. And then underneath, there's a little check mark, which says um, to allow the host to create advanced polls and quizzes. If you do not have that checked, 
then you won't be able to do the advanced one that I'm going to show you today with pictures and fill in the blanks and, and short answers and long answers. And it really kind of ups the game when it comes to providing a poll inside your Zoom meeting. The other option is that meeting survey that takes place at the end, kind of out on the way out the door. And all you have to do is make sure that that's switched on. Okay, so once you've done that, then you're gonna be prompted to create the polls. They don't get created for you. You have to go in and actually type in the questions you want, type in the, the, um, the choices. A poll or a survey could either be, tell me what you think. What was your feedback from that open house today? What would you like me to do differently as your agent? Could be anything ranging from very generic like that to here are some options that were discussed today about this property. Which of these did you like the best? Or which of these did you like the worst? Things like that. In order to type these questions in, you first have to log into your account and you have to make sure you do that on the web. So if you're doing your business solely from an iPad or an iPhone or an Android phone or a Windows phone, Android, ta Android tablet, any one of those mobile devices, you're going to need to get a computer and log into your web portal. I advise you really, if you're going to be hosting virtual meetings, that you get one computer at least accessible to you at the time that you know you're going to be hosting, because some of these features <clears throat> are not available from mobile. You can attend via mobile like you're doing today. And you can take part and be engaged. But in order to use all of the features that Zoom gives us, you can't do that solely from a mobile device, like breakout rooms in particular. You have to host the meeting from a computer in order to actually put your, your participants in separate rooms. And that feature, I'm telling you, sets Zoom apart from the rest. Using breakout rooms, so that you can have actual, uh, like an expo or an open house and you can hold it virtually. Oh my goodness. You could have a state of the market presentation if you wanted to bring uh, people in to see what you have to offer or what is being presented. Think about all the people that would come if it's remote as opposed to in person. So <clears throat> in order to use all the features- Oh God, Ma. You really want to be able That's to the point, Wagner, right? a computer. I can hear somebody is, uh, needs to be muted. There we go. Okay, so once you've logged into your web portal, you're then going to do step number two, which is, believe it or not, you have to schedule the meeting or edit the meeting in order to put the questions in. So there isn't a poll menu where you go to say, you know what, Zoom, any time that I have a meeting, I want to have these polls. No, you have to put the poll questions in that match the meeting that you're going to be holding. So once you schedule that or edit it, if it's already in there, then you're going to click create, as you see here on the screenshot. And then you're going to select either poll or advanced polls and quizzing. Okay, so what's the difference here? These are Zoom polls. And I know the word polls is in both of them, but if you don't opt for the advanced kind, then Zoom does just multiple choice or single choice. Single choice is going to be yeses and nos. Did you like today's open house? Yes or no? That type of poll is a single choice poll. If you wanted people to select multiple choice, and I know we all, many of us have taken multiple choice quizzes over our lifetime, possibly, where a multiple choice to us is typically A, B, C, or D, and you only pick one. But to Zoom, a multiple choice is pick all of the following that apply. So you could do something like, well, I'm gonna ask you today, I love to ask you some technical questions. I'm going to ask you some questions today in a poll that's coming up. So stay tuned. I'm actually going to launch a poll and you're going to take it. But typically when I hold my Zoom 
uh, presentations and technical technology classes, I typically want to know what type of device you're joining from. And so sometimes people join from a computer and an iPad. So I might want them to be able to check off Windows computer and iPad and not have the not being forced to just pick one. That would be a multiple choice. Or let me pose this. Maybe you want to ask them which of the following features of this property interests you the most. And from the top, you want to list uh, bathroom with multiple sinks, a master bedroom with attached bath and walk-in closet, attached garage, a pool, whatever. You want to put features in your poll question and you want your audience to be able to pick off, check off more than one. That's a multiple choice. And those two types, single choice and multiple choice, can be created using a Zoom poll. All right, now, this brand new feature for 2022 is called advanced polls and quizzes. If we have any educators in, in, the, in, the, in the class today, any of you who, or have taken classes, real estate classes, your instructor might ask you these questions when you're taking the courses. And this is how they did it. They turned their polls into quizzes. So I, I may or may not imagine how you would do this maybe for your buyer and seller. I never say never. I love the fact that a quiz is an option, but I know you're gonna use this as an advanced poll because watch, not only do you get the single choice and multiple choice, but you can do what's called a rating scale. So you can do that like on a scale from zero to five, please rate the following. And the poll gives you the zero through five and they can click on it or tap on it with their device. An advanced poll also gives you the ability for a fill in the blank. And here you can add an image. Only with advanced polls can you do this. You can add an image. So if you have a picture of your listing, you can put that in your poll and you can say something like, what are the main features you love the most and have just a, a big box for them to type their thoughts. And that would be a long answer. And these are only available on this advanced poll. So there's long answer, there's short answer. And then there's also a matching and there's also a ranking. If you wanted to have them rank options, you can do that as well. Brand new, it takes the, what we knew as polls, just multiple choice, which was really keeping us uh, in a fixed way. Now we can have fill in the blank and you can gather their feedback and have an open-ended question. It's a beautiful thing. So this is what the screen looks like. <clears throat> when you log in, to your Zoom account, and now you're, you're in control. You're the host, you're not on yet, you haven't started your meeting, but you are doing the behind the scenes. And it could be weeks ahead of your event that you're doing this. Actually, I advise you to do this weeks ahead of your event. So you go in and you have already checked that setting that I mentioned up earlier on. Once you've checked the setting, then you're gonna go in and make sure the meeting is scheduled. And I teach those in other classes. You know, if you're thinking now, oh my goodness, I haven't even scheduled a meeting. How would I do that? Um, I, I do teach those in, in other classes. So I understand there's some levels here and some prerequisites that you would have to meet. But given that those have taken place, you're going to go in and click create. And then this is an example of my polls that are already existing for a meeting. And these will all be available to me. The ones that are activated will all be available to me inside of the meeting when I'm there with my audience, as I'm going to show you in a moment. Zoom numbers them one through six, but I don't have to pick them in that order. I can, I can pick them out of order. You can see that there's an icebreaker that I added as number six. So if I want to do that at the top of the meeting, I can. I can pick whichever one I want. And then later on, I can go in and I can see the results as well. 
I can, I can see the results during the meeting if I wanted to. That's a new feature. But the report is always available to me afterwards as well. So you get a reporting of all the responses too. Beautiful thing. Now, how does it look when you're going to launch this? Launching it is the, 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 the time that you're in the meeting, you're the host, you're speaking to your audience. And at the bottom of this screenshot, you see there is a Zoom toolbar. It resembles yours. It starts with the mute button and the start or stop video like you have right now. But you see the button that is circled in green. I just did that. I circled it in green. So here, I'll do it again for you right there. Polls. It could say polls and quizzes if you have, if you're using the advanced one. This is only if you're the host. So you're not going to see this today. You would have to be our co-host today, like I am. I've been made the co-host here in this meeting. Now, once you click that polls, you're then going to be prompted with the poll that you want to launch. I'm gonna do that first and then I'll open it up for questions. So I see there is a question, um, just hold that thought and then I'll open it up for questions based on what I've shown you so far. So I'm gonna launch right now on your screen, a poll. And if you look on your screen, there should be a poll shown with the types of questions that I uh, was describing earlier. Uh, the first one says, what are the main features you love the most? And there is a spot in a long answer for you to type in. You can just type in, I'm just learning polls for the first time, or, you know, I mean, this is an actual poll. You didn't really see um, man many main features, but maybe you had an aha so far and you want to put that in there. Now, if you are not seeing a poll, what I'd like to know is if you're not seeing a poll at all, and because your cameras are off, I can't see your faces, I want you to tell me, yes, I see the poll, just by typing in your answers and submitting. Make sure you submit. But if you don't see the poll, then what I want you to do is Click on your reactions button in your, if you're on the mobile device, you can, if you're on an iPad or an iPhone or an Android phone, you can tap on where it says more. There's like a dot, dot, dot more. And then there are some uh, emojis and there's a green circle or a red circle. If you tap the red circle, I'll be able to see that anybody giving me a red circle does not see the poll. If you're on a computer, just look at the bottom of your screen, there is a reactions button. And if you click on reactions, that's where you're gonna see the red circle as well. The red circle just to indicate that you don't see the poll. And you know some of these things are, well, Betsy, I don't even see reactions, so how can I tell you? If you see the chat, I see somebody did take that opportunity. I did see it pop up. Thank you, thank you, Denise, for taking that opportunity. And you could put it in the chat. You could just say no. If you don't want to type out a whole sentence, you can say no, which would mean for me means I don't see the poll. And all that means is that you've got some homework to do like that, like coming to a webinar and then getting homework. And what that means is your Zoom application is not up to date. It, it's not up to date, that's all. And so what you're going to do afterward is you're gonna go update your application. And I will put a link in the chat. I have a YouTube video. Uh, my company is called Master Tech Class. And I have a, um, I have a YouTube video, but you can just go there and, and watch it and it guides you through how to, how to update. You can get updates from the Zoom website, which is zoom.us. And I will put <clears throat> my, um, I will put my, my website in the chat. Let me make sure it's, it's uh, clickable. And all you're gonna do is update your application. So if you're finding that you are on a mobile device, you, you're not gonna do it now. You're gonna do it from your app store when this is, when this is over. 
And you can search for Master Tech Class on YouTube. I want, I'm going to go grab the link and I'll put it in there um, after I open it up for questions. So thank you to those who have responded. I can see that uh, a percentage of you have responded. Make sure you click submit from the poll. What you're, you're doing is you're experiencing the long answers as well as the fill in the blanks. Kind of neat that you can have a fill in the blank option as well as putting in a, a picture, an image. You could, you could have all of your questions with images if you wanted to. Just do a poll about your listing and have different images. This, there's no limit. On that end, you can just do all of your questions with images. I just gave you a version today with different types of questions so you could experience them. And then make sure you scroll down because there is a last question that asks for uh, how often do you host Zoom meetings? I was curious. And for those who don't have the poll, how often do you host Zoom meetings? Put a zero through a five in the chat. Zero with never have hosted. To five, I host multiple times a month and pick a number anywhere in between there. Zero, you've never hosted. To five, yeah, I'm pretty good at this. I host, I host pretty regularly. And, and it's just a fact, if you haven't hosted yet, uh, I'm so glad you're here um, because learning how to do Zoom, not only joining, but also hosting is so important. And that also tells me if I see a lot of zeros, uh, it also tells me and Marianne that hmm, maybe we're gonna have another topic on how to host, which would be great. Some top tips on how to host your first Zoom meeting, which would be a great, great thing to do. It's something I teach all the time. So nothing against, oh my gosh, I have a zero. I don't wanna put a zero in the chat. It actually helps us to provide future things you might wanna learn. Okay, well, thank you everybody for contributing in the chat. I love that. Some of you are, are hosting a couple times a month and there's a majority of you that never have hosted. So um, I can answer a lot of questions, I know, on any range for that. And thank you to those who did answer the poll, if you saw it there. I'm gonna end that now. And then I'm gonna share the results. So. Hopefully, even if you didn't see the poll, you're now seeing the results on your screen. And that probably will show up despite the fact that, you know, you haven't maybe have the most current version of Zoom. And, you know, just a, a point about that. Many people say to me, oh, well, Betsy, I, I have a laptop back at my office and I, I did update that one. That doesn't update your whole Zoom account. That just updates the one device. So if you have two computers, a phone and an iPad, you have to update all of them, all of the devices, just keep that in mind. Okay, so let me open it up for questions at this time, uh, just before I move on to um, the last few slides today. I did see a question earlier with your, your hand up. <clears throat> if you don't have that question any longer, Marianne, do we have any questions in the chat? I'm looking, I think you're answering them as you're going along, but I'm looking, I don't see anything. Okay. All right, well, wonderful then. Uh, just while you're looking then, let me just move on to the, let me just move on to the other topic, which is surveys. If you wanna be able to provide a survey, let me just stop the share there so that comes off. Okay, beautiful. And if you want to be able to provide the questions that your um, audience is going to be filling out, but provided at the end of the session, you do that with a survey. Surveys do not pop up <clears throat> during the meeting so that as the host, you can talk about them. That's really the benefit of a poll. A survey comes up after people have said goodbye and they click leave or I end the meeting for all. And this is what a survey looks like. So they're, they're provided with whatever questions you put in, whatever other types, if it's short answer, long answer, and then they click submit and then off they go. This appears on their screen after they've left the meeting. 
So that's a little different. Here are the options in editing a survey, and I'm going to go live now to my account so I can walk you through this and show you where it's located. Um, but this is a, just a, a, a snippet of where you would be typing it in. So where it says, tell us what you think, that was me typing that in. So you can, you can uh, phrase that however you want. And you see a little red asterisk at the end? That question was indicated as required. So you can have these not required, make it optional, or make it required and they have to type something. So, you know, if you want them to be given the option to put their name in, but you don't want it required, you can do that. So some people want to give their name. Sometimes people don't. You can make it optional. And then the types of questions here for a survey range from um, long answer, which is up to 2,000 words, or the uh, single choice and multiple choice, which we saw earlier, as well as a rating scale. So you could say, please rate this open house from zero to five. You want feedback. It's nice to know. And, and then give them an option. What would you add to this experience? You know, what, what would you take away from this experience or however you wanted to word it? And you can do that in a survey. Okay, beautiful. So let me show you now. I'm going to go live to my Zoom account. So in order to do that here in the meeting, I'm going to switch screens. I'm gonna go over to uh, my browser. This is actually the web. This is the internet, okay? And I'm gonna to navigate to zoom.us. So that's me typing there. <clears throat> and uh, just so you know, if you're new to this, so all the people said I never hosted, you know, maybe you've never even checked out your Zoom account before. Once you go to zoom.us, you're going to look in that upper right corner where it says my account. It might for you say sign in, and then you would have to sign in with your account credentials. So you would have had to have made up an account, a free account. You can start with a free account, definitely for hosting. If you want polls, then you'll need to um, have the, the pro account. That um, is that one that I mentioned earlier. And then once you log in and you navigate, let me get my screen situated here like this. So once you log in with your account credentials down the left-hand side, this is what it looks like. This is the Zoom account inside. It's like behind the scenes. And as a host, you can see all of your scheduled meetings that are coming up. So I've got two test meetings today. You can see those that I made in particular for this webinar content so that I could show you the meeting survey and I could show you the polls. Look what's happening on Friday. I'm gonna invite you all to my escape room party. It actually takes place in Zoom and it's free, it's free to join. So I have that scheduled. It's called For the Love of Tech because I love technology. And it's to show you how you can use Zoom instead of just for presenting how you can use it and have your audience be engaged. Great for brokers and agents, as well as educators, uh, anybody, really anybody should come and see what this is about. So to create our polls that you saw earlier today, if you remember back, one of the steps was you have to create or edit the meeting first. So I have to have them scheduled. And now I can go to this edit button and click there and get inside the meeting. And you can see the details that are displayed there for me. Meetings all have uh, meeting IDs and they have passcodes. That's how that link is put together that you clicked on today. Um, this is what's happening in the background and how that host got that link out to you. But look at the very bottom here of the meeting screen. This is where the polls live. This is where you save them all. And it's specific to this meeting only. So today I asked Ethan to create and Marianne to create for me the poll content that you saw. So that poll is not in my account. It's in the LIBOR account. 
But these two polls, these exist in my account. And if I were to create a new one, I would click on create. And there's the option I showed you earlier. Are we gonna do a poll? A poll is just multiple choice or single choice. So do I want just yes, no answers av available or do I want it um, multiple choice answers where they get to pick all that apply? That's all I get with this first option poll. If I want the other one, like you're like, Betsy, I love that idea. I want to put a picture of every room in my listing and have them have them be able to say something about it. That would be great. All right, then you're going to do the other one, advanced polls and quizzing. I know you're not doing a quiz. You don't have to do a quiz. You're just going to click there. And these are the options that you see. The very, very top is where you give it a title. The next bit of text after that is the question text for question number one. So, you know, just for the sake of time, you just type in whatever you whatever you want. And, and as you type it here is how they'll see it. So if you type it in all capitals, that's how they'll see it. If you type it all in lowercase, that's how they'll see it. But look at this listing over on the right. If I want to just give them a, a an area to type what they think, I'm going to choose either short answer or long answer. Long answer is going to give me more characters that I have available to me, you know, more space to type. And I can up that amount in here, in that little box there. So I can make it, you know, bigger or smaller. I can also make it required in case they, I don't want them to just blow past this. And if they don't have anything to say, um, then they can just put not applicable, but they would have to type something. That's up to you. You don't have to make it required, but that's where that lives. Then in these three little dots there, that's where it's hidden. And it says upload image. And when you click on upload image, you, are then prompted, you can't see it on my screen right now, but you're prompted for a picture. And you would have to have those pictures on your computer already. So you would have to have gone to your mobile device, maybe that's where the pictures reside from your listings. And you would need to go in there and send them over to your computer, maybe in a folder. You know, always a good idea to keep all of your digital images organized. And you can do that inside of a local folder on your computer. So I'm going to look for one of my uh, pictures that has to do with uh, maybe houses. Let's see what I come up with. There we go. I found one. This is stock photo. So I have a source that I can use of um, free stock images. And I just gather it from there and download it. And there, question number one is done. And then all you do is you move on to the next one where it says add question. Or just start. And then this one, you can say, you know, please rate um, your experience. Um, um, Zoom, right? I mean, it's a, it's a Zoom on Zoom. Let's see, I hear somebody. It's a webinar on Zoom. There we go. Let me just. Uh, handle the mute button there. So um, this please rate your experience. Now that wouldn't be necessarily an open-ended text box. In this one, I might want to pick rating scale. And there you go. So I just pick it right there from the types of questions. And then here you can see rate it from what? Zero to 10. You want to rate it from zero to five. You can change those numbers. And then you can say zero, you know, the lower scale, you wanna tell them like zero is um, uh, um, didn't, you know, didn't enjoy it. Um, I'm doing these on the fly. And uh, high score would be, I, I will definitely come again, you know, ever. It could be, um, I'm ready to buy. 
you know, um, I am, I'm, I'm on hold, I'm waiting, uh, you know, whatever, you can use some really creative phrases if, if you want. And um, so for there, you could also make that required or leave it optional. And then you click save. And when you click save, it appears as one of your polls for that meeting. And you can have up to 50 polls, 50 polls, and then each poll can have multiple questions. So that's where the polls are created inside of, of your account. The last thing I'll just show you, and then I'll open it up for Q&A, is the next tab over. You see it there? It says survey. So if you go in here and click survey, and then choose create a new survey, all right, it almost looks exactly the same. So if you click in here and say, what, what did you think about today's open house? And if you want to give them, you know, um, you could even make it choices. It doesn't have to be, you know, sometimes people don't know what to write. So you could put, um, you know, this was great. I don't want to do it all in capitals. This was great. You know, this was great. Um, love, love attending these remotely, you know, or, um, you know, I enjoyed myself, enjoyed myself, you know, but had tech issues, whatever. If you get creative, you can sort of get the feedback, right? And, um, but these are single choices. They can only pick one. If you wanted them to be able to pick more than one emotion, um, then you can say multiple choice. And then that turns it into boxes that they can pick more than one and select all that apply. And when you save that, this survey comes up at the end after they leave. So they click leave, the screen changes, the host is no longer there and up comes the survey on their screen. All righty. So uh, let me just open it up for questions. I am gonna remind you that um, uh, I'm inviting you to the uh, for the Love of Tech escape room party. It's free to join. Um, grab three of your friends and colleagues. I'm going to put the link in the chat to join. And um, why should you go? Well, because experiencing a digital escape room uh, is a great way to see how you can go from Zoom fatigue, I always say, to Zoom fun. And if you compete in teams, I know it's not, it's not hard, it's just fun. And I show you how to use video of yourselves, obviously. And so that link is in the chat. You can just uh, click there and register. If, even if you wanna come as a single participant and, and it's a great networking event too. I'll, there, I have plenty of, of real estate professionals coming. So it's a great thing to present to you here. And with that, I also have a free Facebook group and uh, that link I'll put in the chat as well. And then uh, let me know, Marianne, do we have any questions in the chat? What time is that escape room party? Yes, it, it is. It's, there's two times that are available, 3 p.m. Eastern time or 7 p.m. Eastern time. And that's on the registration form. So if you click there, you'll see um, an option to pick one or the other. Yeah. All right. All right, let's make sure I put the right link in the chat whenever I'm typing these. Perfect. Okay, those two links are working nicely. And then, uh, okay, so I do see one question there from Karen. Um, you're checking all of your devices for the updated version. What is the version number? Great question. So uh, what I'd like you to do right here in this meeting together. Um, so Karen, you can either put it in the chat or unmute yourself. Are you on a computer or a mobile device? Because that'll change my answer of where you find. I'm going to show everybody where you find your version. So if you could just let Hello? me. Know. Yes. Can you hear me now? Hi. 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 Hi, Karen. Are you on a computer or a, an iPad or an iPhone or an Android phone? Well, right now I'm on the computer. Okay. 
So from a computer, what I'd like you to do is look in the upper left corner of your screen, mm -hmm. upper, upper left corner, there is a tiny green shield. And anybody who's on a computer right now, look in the upper left corner, tiny green shield. And if, if you click there, a little box opens up with today's meeting ID and the name and all of that. And in that little box is a gear. It's usually like in the upper right corner of that box, like a little gear. And it's like the symbol for settings we see all over the place. Yes. When you, when you click there, they messed it up. When you click there, then you can um, open up your settings. And it's at the bottom of that screen. So it's like a white box that opens up. And mm -hmm. at the bottom, it tells you what version you're currently, um, you're currently on. The version that you want is, I'm going to say, um, five. I'm going to just check for you because I update all the time. There we <laughs> go. So before I, I knew it, but I just want to check it, 5.9.3. That's the computer version, 5.9.3. 5.9.3, perfect. Okay, awesome, thank you so much. Right. You're welcome, thanks for asking that question, beautiful. Anybody, anybody else have a question like that? Something I can show you? Um, so if you're not, uh, if you don't have the latest version, how would you grab the update? Yes, okay, so let me, um, <clears throat> I'm gonna, Give you another link in the chat just to help you out here. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to go to, uh, you can do this from zoom.us. I'll show you this in a moment. Let me just grab another link for you. And uh, I have a how to video on how to do this. And you can't do it now because when the meeting is going on, uh, the application is, is uh, in, it's active. So when you leave the meeting today and the meeting is over, you're gonna go to your um, Zoom application on your computer, make sure you're still logged in. So here's a link to that YouTube video that I made, it's my own how-to video. If you, <clears throat> wanted to see from the Zoom website. Here, I'll show you, that's my, let's go back to my Zoom account. If you go to the Zoom website in the upper right corner, right up here, you can click on where it says resources. You can see that there, I'm demonstrating live for you. Then you can come down to where it says, I know it sounds technical, but that's what it is. Download Zoom client. Download Zoom client. So if you're here today saying, I don't even have a Zoom account, so how would I even log in to get the updates? <clears throat> you're going to start by downloading the Zoom client. That's going to be the most recent. So I would start there as well. So now you have two ways. You can go watch my YouTube video. That's, um, it's a how-to. It's, it's like a, I think it's a minute long. It's a very short video. It just tells you where to click, what to do. The update takes a cup, you know, maybe 10 seconds, 20 seconds. It's very short, very short and quick. I advise everybody to do that. Great, that's okay. helpful. Yep, great. All right, good. Anything else? As I glance, I'm gonna scroll all the way back. Nope, I don't see any other questions in the chat. Is there anything else I can show you before we wrap it up today? Think you can go, you can continue. Okay. okay. Well, because um, let's see, I've I've shown you everything about the polls and quizzes. If there if there isn't any other questions, what I can do is show you. Um, we had talked earlier about some of the other features that came out for 2022. And you're gonna want to make sure those are turned on in your settings as well. So if you're like, okay, I'm ready. I wanna get full access to the new Zoom features that are out there. I know how to update, I'm gonna do that. Well, you need to go into your Zoom account and make sure those settings are on as well. So <clears throat> when you log in, 
and you click on settings on the left side of the screen. One of the ones I talked about today was focus mode. So you're gonna scroll down like this area, it's a, it's a long area. So just keep scrolling when you get to your settings because there's scheduled meeting settings, there's basic settings, there's advanced settings. And I do, I teach all of this as well. And then here you go. You come up across this focus mode. Look, we just passed by the virtual background settings. So people who are like, oh, that's exactly what I wanted. I don't wanna show my you know, regular uh, work area behind me, I want to show, you know, my virtual backgrounds and I don't want the Golden Gate Bridge and I don't want, you know, the beach. So how do I change? And those are located in your settings as well. So, but below there is this option, focus mode, and that's brand new. So is the one above it, immersive view. That one came out a little bit earlier, but focus mode is if you want to be able to have your uh, Zoom your um, virtual event. And instead of having everybody's camera on at one point during the meeting, if you want to be able to turn everybody's cameras off, you can do that with focus mode, but you won't be able to have the capability if that option is not on in your settings. So anything here that's not on, when you go to run your meeting, you won't have that capability. So you have to turn on the setting first. The one that comes to mind, I'll just give you this tip before we wrap it up for today, is co-hosts. If you want to be able to have a helper in the meeting with you, maybe you work as a team and you want to be able to have your team with you in the Zoom meeting, maybe you want to invite me in. <laughs> Many people are like, Betsy, can you come help me with my first Zoom meeting? Um, in order to make me a co-host, like I'm a co-host today, and I have a lot of the capabilities that the host does. There's only one host ever for a, a meeting, for a Zoom meeting. That responsibility can be passed around, but only one host at a time. But you can have multiple co-hosts, and you could have 50 co-hosts if you have a meeting with 2,000 participants and you need to be able to manage you know, and have other helpers, like you're thinking, how would I do this? It's doable. You just have to be able to make sure that in order to assign a co-host in the meeting, you have to have this option on. So I can't stress enough after you get your Zoom, up, Zoom updated today that you log in here and look at the, the Zoom settings. And um, other than the focus mode, which is new for 2022, and the polls, which I, which I showed you in, our, in my PowerPoint, but here it is live. There it is, meeting polls and quizzes. So you wanna make sure that's on and your meeting survey. Aside from those brand new features, there are others which I've mentioned today, which are breakout rooms. And for breakout rooms, this is under your advanced area in the settings. And you, as you can see here in the uh, screen share, that there are three checkboxes. The third one was just added, hot off the presses, like January 24th is when it came out. And that one is allow, allowing the host to create and rename and delete breakout rooms. So for those of you who were who came to the last webinar, I saw uh, Marianne put the links in the chat for the recordings. Go back and watch those recordings on using breakout rooms. It allows you to have a, a virtual event. And as your buyers and sellers are coming in, they can pick which room they wanna go to. And it's a great way to break up this main meeting room that we're all in today into, into individual rooms. Well, now, once the rooms are open, you can manipulate things which you couldn't do before. So that's a brand new feature. And then finally, finally, oh my goodness, is the waiting room. So today, as you approached and joined with the, with the join link today, you were placed in the waiting room. And that is a setting in your account as well. So the waiting room is on, that's the first thing. Now I'm gonna show you mine. 
I am using one of the new features, which is to add a video. So watch this. This is so great. And I, I have sound off right now, but I'll just pause it. That's a video, you guys. It's It can be 35 seconds. It can be two minutes, depending on the size of the video. And I don't mean length in minutes. I mean size in like megabytes. There's a limit to that. But now as they come into your waiting room, you can say, hi, everybody. I'm so glad you're here for the open house. And this is what I have to tell you. And you can give them a little video introduction while they're waiting. Beautiful. And I have been waiting for that feature. And that's now available <clears throat> in Zoom as well. All right. So we're at the almost at the top of the hour. Let me just look for um, any new questions. Anybody want to? Um, raise their hand or unmute before I let Marianne wrap it up for today. Um, can you quickly show us how to put that video in the wait room? That's really cool. It is really cool. All right, so first step is you have to be in settings, logged in as your account. Next step is here I am in the waiting room options area and underneath it says customize waiting room. Go ahead and click there. Now, this bit of text up here is editable. So if you wanted it to say, welcome to the open house, welcome to the state of the market, welcome, whatever, you could do that, right? You see how that edited it underneath? Now, when you come in yours, yours probably says the default or a logo. And I see on the left side there, I've chosen a video. I've actually clicked there. And then what you're going to do is you're going to upload. So right here where it says welcome, there's a little up arrow where you can upload a video. I know mine says upload another. You can't have two. It would replace mine. I'm actually in my settings right now. So, um, so I don't, I don't want to replace mine, but you're just going to click upload. And then it, it's going to ask you where the video is. The video has to be done already. So prior to this, I sat down, I started a new Zoom meeting. I do it in Zoom. I mean, if you wanted it higher quality, set up your phone on a, on a tripod, you know, like that, um, and talk into your phone. And then you have to get the video. Don't make it too long on your phone because it, it's hard to transfer video from your phone to your computer when it's very, very long. So be somewhat brief if you are taking it on your phone and then um, upload it from there. And then once you upload it, uh, it's in there. You just click save. And there is a limit, 30 megabytes is the limit. You can do an MP4, an MOV, or an M4V. But here's the thing. If you don't see this option, if right now you're on your computer and you're looking and you don't see this option for video, let me see if anybody put that, okay. Then you need to contact Zoom support I'm, I'm serious about that. There's a little chat. Look, I'm going to show you. I'm live right now on my, on my internet. Look down at the bottom there. See that little blue circle with the white sort of call out? You're going to click there. If you don't see that video option, they need to enable it for you. Anybody today who's on with us who doesn't even have an account and you're going to create an account, you're going to have it. But people like me that have had their account for years, and then these new features came out, I, I, I'm finding I have to chat with support. And it's, they're very good. They, they work with me and they enable it. But just want you to know that, that you'll have to, um, if you don't see it, that's why. And also, if you have a free account, then you don't get the waiting room. So there's things like that, that you'll be limited. So you can always, uh, you can always reach me uh, through that, that Facebook uh, group. I'll just put that back up again. And that's in the chat. Or uh, my email, which I'll put in the chat as well. So if you um, had a question, feel free to um, send it to me that way. There you go. I hope to see you all on Friday. 
um, it's a great opportunity to do a little bit of further learning just by experiencing something. And it's not difficult. It's, it's not, oh my gosh, I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to know technology enough to do it. It's not that at all. It's um, meant for anybody and bring along some people, you know, and um, work as a team. I'll, I'll put you in breakout rooms. So you'll get a chance to experience that too. So that's what I love about it. Um, that's great, Betsy. Um, just a tip for everyone. If you're creating your own video, there are great teleprompter apps that are free that you can put on your phone, type your text in there or cut and paste over your text and it will scroll nice and slowly. So you look into your phone and you're reading and nobody is the wiser. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Alrighty. I think that, well, let's see. Well, those were your comments. No, I think that's it. All right. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for joining. And um, we hope to have Betsy back soon. And uh, maybe we'll do something a little more basic for those who have never started or held a meeting. I think that might be needed. I think so. That, that sounds like a lot of fun. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank you very much, Marianne. And Thank I you. really enjoy being invited in to speak here. Thank you. Okay. Bye, everyone.